What's up, guys? Here we go into a video on Stevenson versus Jamel Herring. And we're going to be talking about a, a few things. We're going to be talking about protecting your positions. And we're going to be talking about controlling the line and attacking the line and all these fun and interesting things. And we're going to be talking about the biggest difference between Jamel Herring and Shakur Stevenson in this fight. And it's not speed and athleticism. And it's not youth and, you know, or reach. I don't know what the reach was or height or size. It was simply that when Shakur Stevenson will get into a position similar to this, where his weight was near the front foot and he's readying an attack with his left hand, he would often have, or his right hand, sorry, he would often have his left hand in a position here near his chin to guard the line against that attack. Okay, and Jamel Herring here, as we can see, getting to this position, anticipating a jab from Shakur Stevenson, and then getting into that position to let go of his own jab here, but getting timed by Shakur Stevenson. But I want you to pay attention to Stevenson's jab, right? But his rear hand, where his rear hand is in relation to the punch and the line, okay? Jamel Herring's hands were much, much lower during the course of the fight, and I don't want to say low. I don't like the idea of having your hands down. You don't want to have your hands up. You don't want to have your hands down. You want to have your hands in position to interact with the line. So, Jamal Herring here, without putting his hands up and without getting his rear hand into a position in which he can catch the jab of Stevenson, doesn't have the opportunity to control the space and defend his position like Shakur Stevenson does. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I mean about Shakur Stevenson. And let's see, what's a good one? We're gonna be looking at them all, but. Doo, doo, doo. I think this one's okay. So coming forward, and Stevenson controlling the space with his rear hand, right? He's caught that jab, and he's maintained control of the line. Okay? He's ready to, to intercept the next attack. He sees the attack coming, and he can interact with uh, Jamel Herring as he approaches the line. Now again, he gets to the line, he shoots his jab, and look where his rear hand is. Again, it's in a position to interact with his opponent's lead hand if he were to make an attack against him, as he does here, and Stevenson's able to catch it. Now, as Stevenson comes forward, he's going to continue to put this kind of pressure on Jamel Herring, where Jamel Herring's jab is not as effective because there's no line, right? But look at what happens when Jamel Herring has a similar defense, right? Stevenson starts to control his defense and look for other opportunities, right? Control that glove, and there were other opportunities where Stevenson would find ways to go to the body in similar positions here, showing a bit of craft, a bit of intelligence, right? But I want to point out that Jamel Herring, with this defense here, the high guard, closing his hands, doesn't always have access to the line with his vision. So he's not always going to be able to see these punches or these positional changes. So I want to point out how much, I don't want to say safer or this or that, but more effective for protecting your opponent or yourself from a jab, right? Because what is it that Herring is protecting himself from here? Is he anticipating the one-two? Okay, he could be anticipating the one-two and not anticipating having the speed to block it. So he wants to get both hands in line to interact with his opponent? Sure. Okay. Well, he wanted to shoot a jab. So no, that's wrong. But in any case, he runs out of ways to interact with Stevenson and stop Stevenson from coming forward. And now he has to resort to ducking below the line because eventually it's going to get, you know, predictable, right? And we're going to take a look at that real quick here. And Stevenson's coming forward. And this is one of the first times in the fight that Stevenson really started to put it on Herring. And again, Herring, a few things, doesn't control the line with his rear hand. Notice his glove is pointed to himself. But he also likes to take a step with his punches, as he does here. And on this rhythm and on this timing, Stevenson realizes that Herring's weight is going to go back. And now when he takes that step forward on his left leg, that's the timing that he likes to throw punches. Now, a few of the problems, again, with Jamel Herring, he doesn't control the space with his rear hand. Not only does he not look to interact with his opponent's jab, but he only looks to interact with his opponent's uh, on the line with his own lead hand. Okay? This means that when he gets there, when Stevenson re reads that his weight is coming forward, he just has to start initiating his 1-2 and punching right over the top of that shot. 
Now again, Jamil Herring, without being able to get his weight and get his shoulder in in the line against uh, Shakur Stevenson, he doesn't have as much control over this position. And then again, without being able to catch that shot with his rear hand, he has no vision of the line, and it allows Stevenson to really unload on him and land a lot of huge shots. So a lot of really small details here that kind of pile up uh, and allow... I want to say Stevenson to have more opportunities at offense than Herring. Now, another one of these problems, again, of of not being not having your hands up, right? And I don't want to say having your hands up, but having your hands in a position to interact with the line, okay? Like Stevenson does here, is that when Herring slips his weight to the front foot here, he can't just catch this punch. He actually has to slip because his hands are not up, and he doesn't realize that this is not the punch that Shakur Stevenson is trying to land. It's actually the right hand or the left hand, right? He's trying to set him up for the one-two, but Herring thinks he's doing the right thing by getting his head farther off the line and then gets walked into this shot. And again, without proper control of the line and without the ability to control the line with his rear hand, he doesn't have the opportunity to dictate his positions as well as Stevenson, who can defend the line even when he's attacking. Now here, again, getting fainted, pushed to the back half of his line this time, and Stevenson still able to land a really big shot. Um, again, all because Stevenson, or all because Herring thinks it's a good idea to cross the line with his hands down. Look at his hand here, right? One glove, two glove. Neither one of his hands are on this side. How would he even make an attack on his opponent when he brought his weight back across the line anyway? Okay? A lot of these fundamental errors, right, um, compounding and just giving Stevenson these small, tiny little advantages to kind of, you know, pile up on and, and, you know, take advantage of. Now, we're going to take a look at one more clip. And actually, we might look at two. Let's see. What was this one? Oh, that clip, right? And then that's the one we just looked at. Ah, Stevenson coming forward again with the rear hand forward, right? Able to interact with the line, again, much more often than Herring was. And again, this gives him the opportunity to see big punches coming much more often. Even though this one might have clipped him, he begins his pendulum step off the line, um, and his defense is much more readily available when he's constantly looking for the line and looking to interact with it. Now, we're going to take a look at one more little clip here of... Um, highlighting Jamel Herring, and I want you guys to be paying attention to his jab and how he's going to be shooting it. Now, kind of in the neutral position here, right? When he slips to the front foot, where's his hand? Where's his rear hand? Is it in position to interact with the line? Not really. Maybe he can throw a hard punch, but I'm not sure that he's ready to catch a punch. Shooting his jabs, again, interacting with the line from the front foot with the jab, interacting with the, at the line here, again with the jab. But in all these positions, when he brings his weight even to the front foot, crossing the line here, he never once faints or probes at Stevenson with this hand. He never once looks to control the line with this hand, even though he brings his shoulder to the front line, even though he changes positions. It shows a fundamental misunderstanding of what he's trying to accomplish in the ring. Okay, and this is one of the reasons why Shakur Stevenson had so many more opportunities for offense is because Stevenson could control the line with this hand and this hand. And again, throughout this entire clip, Jamal Herring not one time looks to interact with his opponent with his rear hand. A little bit there, catching here, but not actively catching, not trying to catch while he's throwing a punch, which is something that Stevenson is constantly doing, which allows Stevenson to inch forward to set up those big combinations that he was landing. Uh, and also, really interestingly too, we're going to take a look at this real quick. When he goes from the jab and keeping the right hand in the catching position, it also allows him to let that right, that left hand go much more easily uh, because it's already in position to interact with the line. Uh, so also, just understanding that keeping his hand in position to interact with the line gives him that extra little bit of speed or technique, right? That's going to, you know, catapult him over Jamel Herring's speed because Jamel Herring didn't look like no pushover, right? It didn't look like he came to dive. It didn't look like 
anything other than, um, you know, I'll say a, a classic ass beating. <laughs>